thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really appreciate it. This video is going to be my how I create my cash envelopes. This video has been requested by a good amount of you guys. I have also gotten messages on my Instagram regarding my envelopes and how I make them. I do want to go ahead and apologize for taking so long to upload this video. I have been under the weather, my car was having issues, and when I originally filmed this video, I just was not happy with the results. So I went ahead and I bought this awesome table right here. And I went ahead and invested for my YouTube channel so that I can create this video for you guys. So now I want to show you guys my new set of cash envelopes before I get started on this video. So these are my new set of cash envelopes. I decided to create new ones because my other ones felt very big for my wallet and were just not, they just weren't working out. and. I wasn't happy with them so I went ahead and I did a whole different uh, design and I did a whole different um, uh, kind of uh, sizing and a different back part for my <clears throat> cash envelopes so I just want to show you guys real quick what my cash envelopes look like now. I have a whole bunch of them because I also have my sinking funds, but these are kind of like my main envelopes where I um, that I do take everywhere with me. Now I'm going to show you guys how I make my cash envelopes. So now the first thing you want, obviously it's some scrapbooking paper. It can be either thick cardstock scrapbooking paper like this one or it can be the thin kind I know that the thick one tends to be a bit more expensive and it tends to have less on the pad the thin one tends to have a lot more papers and um, I think sometimes they're cheaper but I personally love the thicker uh, uh, cardstock scrapbooking paper because I feel like I get a better turnout and I'll show you guys how I get that turnout so the first thing I go ahead and I do is I grab any kind of paper that I like. This is just some extra that I had. And I used to actually make my cash envelopes on my Cricut. I used to put the scrapbooking paper on the sticky pad for the Cricut. Um, and that's the green pad that goes through the Cricut. And I used to just do the, the cutting on that. But it took forever because... I had to do that for every sheet and it was really annoying. So this is actually easier. You go ahead and you um, fold it in half. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and do that. So one of the hard things about this thick cardstock paper is that it's kind of hard to... So I like to do this. Once you go ahead and you um, fold it in half and you have it as even as you possibly can on the sides, on the top. I like to actually go ahead and get um, this tool that I got in my Cricut package. And I like to make sure that it is definitely flat. <clears throat> and that's just to make sure that when I laminate it, I do get, um, I do get to put the scrapbooking paper into the laminator as flat as I possibly can so that in the future there are no side tears on my envelope. So now what I like to use as a slicer for my envelopes is actually this awesome uh, slicer I got at Michael's. I did buy it with the coupon. I try my best to always buy as much as I can at Michael's with coupons. And I really, really, really love this slicer because it has little indents. And these indents are actually what help me um, figure out the sizing for my envelope. So I personally like smaller envelopes. So my envelopes measure from lengthwise. They measure six and three fourths. And I actually have a line on top of right here. I put it with the Sharpie. Um, on top of the three fourths after the six, so that I remember this is where I'm going to cut my envelope lengthwise. So let me do it this way. 
them. So now, and then you're gonna go ahead and just slice it. For the width, I actually have two spots. I have three and one fourth, and that is my first slice. And then my second slice after I'm done laminating is three and one six. But um, I have started to just use the first slice, um, which is three and one six. So that is the actual length of my envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure three and one fourths for the width. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slice it. So this is the size of my envelope. This, this is the actual size that I use and I'm gonna show you with <clears throat> one of my actual envelopes. So as you guys can see, that is the, the size, very similar size. Once I'm done slicing it, I am going to go over it again with what is this called? Does anybody know what this is called? If somebody does, I'd really appreciate you guys letting me know. So I like to go through it as many times as I possibly can so that it's easier to um, process it through my laminator. I use the Scotch Thermal Laminator and I really, really love it, guys. I, I definitely recommend it. <clears throat> so my laminator is ready. So now I'm going to go ahead and place this through my laminator and I'll be right back. Okay friends, so I went ahead and I laminated my envelope and now it is done. It went through the laminator. So now what we are going to do, we are going to cut around the envelope. And I do want to let you guys know that I cut a little bit over the line that the laminating paper comes out with. So whenever you laminate something, there is an edge line and this line is basically the line where you want to cut around so that the paper that you are putting inside the laminating sheet will hold for a very long time. In my case though, I like to go a little bit over that line. So these indents are very, very helpful because I actually place the very edge of the paper, not the line that comes with the laminating sheet after you process it through the laminator, but the actual paper. And I place it on the one eighth um, indent. So as you guys can see, right here is the slicing indent. This is where you slice right here. And here is the one eighth indent, this one right here. So I like to place the very edge of the paper of my envelope, I like to place it right on top of the one eighth. And that's when I'm going to slice my envelope. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the sides. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> you want to leave a good amount of space around the envelopes because this is honestly how the envelopes are going to last you a long time. So now I'm actually going to um, cut the top part and I'm gonna put it back onto my slicer and right onto the three and one eighth indent. And that's the indent that I need to be able to open my envelope. And you can actually tell what side is the side to open your envelope because on the top, it will be white compared to the other sides. And the other side, the closing side, will be a lot thicker and you'll see the design on the line on this part. So now my envelope is open. And what I really love to do, but I mean love, <clears throat> is put my envelope through my laminator about five times. 
I'm not even kidding. I put it through five times after I finish all of this because once more guys, I want my envelopes to last me and this is how they will last me. So I'm gonna put it through my, um, my laminator five times and I will be right back. All right, friends, so I went ahead and I processed my envelope into my laminator about five times. So now it's actually very sturdy and I can even tell and I could even feel it when I opened it. So my envelope will for sure last me a good amount of time. Now that it's ready to go, I can honestly use my envelope like this if I wanted to. I don't really have to do anything else, but I actually like to use a transaction card. And this little card, I actually created it on PowerPoint. So I will be making a separate video as to how to make this card. So I'm going to show you guys how I place this card on here and keep it there. Now, like I said, this card I created on PowerPoint and I normally print out two per paper and they normally come like this on an 8 by 11 paper. And once I print them out, I put them through my laminator and I can fit three. And once I put them through my laminator, I just go ahead and I cut them with scissors. All right, so these ones, I actually don't mind cutting right on the line on these ones because they're very easy to replace um, and I don't really like ever have an issue with these coming apart from the laminating sheet because it is very flat paper. It's not like this thick cardstock paper that will have issues coming apart from the laminating sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and process this through my laminator uh, just three times. All right, we are back. So I went ahead and I processed this transaction card through my laminator three times to flatten it out completely and it is very flat. Now I'm ready to assemble my entire envelope. So a lot of you guys were asking, how do I clip my transaction sheets onto my envelope like so? As you can see, they clip on here and when I shake them, the sheet doesn't come off. And I actually do that with magnets, little tiny magnets. And I will go ahead and um, place links below this video in regards to everything that I use in the video, including the camera, the table, everything. So I will have links below for you guys. So these little magnets I actually got on Amazon. And I am an avid magnet user because of my side hustle. <laughs> So I thought to myself one day, why don't I just use magnets so that I can stop losing my transaction cards? And it took a lot of trial and error, but I finally figured it out. So what I like to do first is turn my envelope around. And I like to Go ahead and first stick them together because there are opposite sides. Stick them together, then pull them apart and place them down. And you can place them anywhere. I normally like to place them in between lines so that when I am writing on the transaction card, I don't bump over the um, magnet. Now, once the magnets are placed on the envelope where I want them to be, and once the magnets are where I want them to be, I go ahead and I grab some packing tape. And I use this type of packing tape. Okay, so it can be a big piece. Um... It's not a perfect cut, obviously, but I just go ahead and I grab packing tape and I place it on top of the magnet. So, place it right here. 
All right, so I went ahead and I added the packing tape onto the back of my magnets so I can turn it around. Once I go ahead and I turn it around, I put it on top of my envelope. And I get another magnet. This is the magnet that's going to go inside my envelope and I open my envelope and I just make sure that I find the other magnet, like I let it clip. So I don't know if you guys heard that clip, but there's a little clip. I'm gonna go ahead and do it again with this side. I know it's not perfect, but because it's a magnet, <clears throat> because it's a magnet, you can actually maneuver it. So let me show you. And sometimes it will fall and you just have to like try it again. And sometimes it just doesn't want to. So you can help it by moving it with your finger inside like that. And then I just look at it, and if I feel like that's the right placement that I want, I think I will be fine with this kind of placement. Then I can go ahead and get the other magnet, magnet number two. It's going to go on this side, and I open up my envelope again, and then I just try to find the other magnet and place it in there. There we go. Now I'm just going to even it out to my liking. And of course, I'm not gonna leave it like that. Now we have one final step. We are gonna add more packing tape, but this time we're gonna add it inside. So let's grab some packing tape. And this is a very hard part. Also, <clears throat> you have to be careful with packing tape. Because the minute that packing tape sticks to paper, Forget about it. It's not gonna come off the way you want it to. So what I like to do is I like to open my envelope, not too much, but as much as I can. And I like to just slide the packing tape onto the side where the magnet is not um, hanging off on. So this side right here, where my finger is rubbing, there's no magnet there. If I turn it around, you can see the magnets on the side where my finger is rubbing. So I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna go ahead and slide the packing tape in there. So hopefully I can do this on camera. Uh-oh, I already stuck it <laughs> to the paper. So let's try it again. Slide it in there and get it over the magnet. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And then just stick it down like that down you don't have to stick it down too hard all right so now we're gonna do it on this side and I'll show you the tape in a bit so now let me show you the inside so that's the inside I hope you can see the packing tape in there that's the inside there is packing tape in there it's kind of shiny all right and now you are able to clip this on and off. And it really doesn't fall off. That's what makes it so great. So now you have your envelope and you also have your transaction sheet that sticks onto your envelope and prevents you from losing it as much. <laughs> and it's complete. All you need is scrapbooking paper, a laminator, laminating sheets, paper, and magnets. Oh, and packing tape, of course. And that's pretty much it, guys. There's really nothing else to it. Um, some of you guys were asking how I created my words right here on the bottom. And I made those on my Cricut. And it's just an extra little touch that I added to my envelopes. Um, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to add that. I thought, why not? And uh, you can just make them on your Cricut. And I'm going to show you real quick how I placed them onto my envelope. I created these on my Cricut. This is for my beauty envelope. And this is for my groceries envelope. And... I'm going to use this one for beauty and this one for groceries. So this is transfer sheet paper and you just take it off 
you want to make sure you have the lines facing you and then the sticky part going over the vinyl <clears throat> and then you want to transfer the words onto the transfer paper so that then you can place the transfer paper on the envelope wherever you want to place your words and I'll show you what happens after that so now we're gonna pull this apart and it should stick onto this. I hope you guys can see that. It does say beauty on the bottom. So we're going to grab this, place it wherever you want to. I'm going to keep it on the bottom. Ah, I'll make sure that it's kind of straight. Right. And then transfer it onto my envelope. Voila! So it does say beauty on there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it does say beauty and I have it in white because when I placed it over it in, in black, it wasn't really coming out how I wanted it to come out. And for these, I still need to place my magnets and my um, little transfer sheets. So I will do that later. And then I'm going to add groceries. There we go, and that's my groceries envelope. Now I just need to add my transaction sheet. And I like to make sure that my envelopes can stick together like so. So those are actually magnetized with each other. The forces are coming together and keeping the envelopes together. So I wanna make sure that these do the same thing, like that, and will stay stuck. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and get my envelopes, turn them around, turn this around as well, like this. <clears throat> and I do it on the back of the transaction sheet. I place my magnets on the magnetized um, magnet from the bottom, which is on the transaction sheet. So there's that. You can see the magnets are behind. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my packing tape. So, here's my packing tape. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab my magnet and place it onto the packing tape. I want to make sure I leave, like, a good amount next to the magnet. And I'm going to... Do the long side facing inward this way so like so I'll show you guys once more you want to make sure that the magnet will stick back onto so I don't know if you guys saw that but you want to make sure that with the packing tape the magnet sticks onto the envelope on the top like this so there's that so I went ahead and I got an new transaction transaction sheet without the magnets on the back so I'm gonna go ahead and level it to where I want it to be placed I want to make sure that the magnets also go behind it and then I'm gonna stick it down to my liking and I feel like that's perfect enough for me I'm pretty satisfied and then just pick it up and the packing tape should be strong enough to hold the um, the transaction sheet for you once you place the transaction sheet down onto the magnets with the packing tape, the packing tape should actually be strong enough to um, hold the magnets onto the transaction sheet so you can remove it. Turn it around. And I just want to let you guys know I'm not perfect. As you guys can see, the magnet, for some reason, it came all the way to this side. But that is how I'm going to be able to keep my um, envelopes leveled so I'm assuming yeah this magnet is a little bit more to the side than the other one which is fine it's not a big deal to me I just need something that works and something that will stick my envelopes together so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep it like so and then I'm gonna cut off any 
excess um, tape. All right, now that I have cut off the excess tape on the transaction sheet, I'm going to go ahead and get some simple tape, not packing tape, and I'm gonna tape the sides. And remove your envelope. So the tape is going to help you place the magnets inside, because remember, we still need those inside magnets so that the transaction sheet sticks to the envelope when you're using the envelope alone. There's the little click. So now my magnets are inside and I'm gonna open it up a bit so you guys can see. There's my magnet, there is my magnet. So those are my little magnets in there. Now we're gonna get our packing tape again And we are going to stick the packing tape inside behind the magnets. All right, so now that I went ahead and I added packing tape to my inside magnets and I made sure the entire magnet was covered around in uh, packing tape, I can take off my little tape that I have right here. And I reuse this whenever I'm making more envelopes. And there we go. It sticks on. If you guys want to keep watching, watch me make my beauty envelope and get it to stick onto the rest. Keep watching. If not, this is the end of this video. I will be making a second part as to how I create these transaction sheets on PowerPoint. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a lengthy video, but I feel like I really, really needed to show you guys how to make these envelopes. I got so many of you guys asking me how to make them and I just wanted to provide. So if you guys are going to go ahead and stop watching this video, have a very lovely day or night. And if you are not going to stop watching this video, just enjoy me finishing my beauty envelope. Thank you so, so much for sticking around until the very end. For those of you who stuck around until the very end to watch me make my beauty envelope, I do have a surprise for the first 10 of you who go ahead, subscribe to my channel, follow me on my Instagram, and direct message me on my Instagram. This is what you're going to direct message me. Hi, my name is so-and-so, or you can put down your YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is so-and-so. I watched your how I make my cash envelope videos, and this is what I thought about them. So go ahead and leave me feedback on a direct message to, through Instagram. Subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagram. I am going to go ahead and send you four handmade cash envelopes, and I'm gonna send you the wording of your choice. And that's for sticking around until the very end. So go ahead and do that for me. I will really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and ring that little notification bell on the bottom so that you know when I am going to post more content or when I do. And subscribe to my channel. 
thank you so much my friends. I really, really, really appreciate you watching my video. Goodbye.